Hello, viewers and listeners. It's Paul. Samir, wake up, Samir. Oh, hello, mate. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> um, I was the one celebrating last night, mate. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> hey, um, your hate. Well, struggling a bit, as I said to you off air, but I shall, I shall go over it again for the benefit of the audience. Um, yeah, the, the girlfriend booked a meal out last night, and yeah, you know, we don't go out very often these days with the cost of living crisis in this fucking country. But anyway, um, we don't go out very often. So she booked a meal out. Yeah. It was like a steak meal with a free bottle of wine for 30 quid, right? Which right. isn't a bad deal. I mean, some people, depending on where you live in the world, might go, 30 quid? Fuck, you know? But anyway, over here, that's a pretty good deal. Good so we went out, 20, you know, went out, 20 minute drive, got to this place, not a bad restaurant. You know, where I live, service is pretty shit. It's mediocre at best, right? So this restaurant we were at, we sat down, we were shown the bar, bought a few drinks. Anyway, cutting a long story short, the missus don't drink red wine. And of course, you can't have white wine with a steak, can you? I mean, that's ridiculous. You, you, it's, it's pretty standard that red meat, red wine, white meat, white wine. So I had half a bottle of red wine to myself. And it wasn't bad. It was, it was okay. Um but this morning, early hours this morning, half past three, woke up. That was it. Been awake ever since. Yeah, I so I'm fucked. From you at six o'clock in the morning. Well, I was sending you, like, I was just sharing stuff with you off Twitter yeah. this morning, like fucking four in the morning. <laughs> yeah. I, I got up at <laughs> six or seven. I go, what? What's going on here? <laughs> it's Sunday. <laughs> well, I thought I'd start your day off right, you know, with a good, a good rant and, you know, just like... <clears throat> You know what's going on with a fucking world? It's gone mental. I thought, you know, well, if I'm feeling it, at three in the morning or half three in the morning, you can have something. All as soon as you wake up, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> it might be actually well, similar to yours when I saw those stories. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. <coughs> anyway, yeah. So struggling a bit. How are you? You all right? Yeah, not bad, mate. Not bad. <laughs> I think I'm struggling after seeing you tired. I'm pretty tired. It's catching, mate. Yeah, I think. Uh... Uh, you know, I've had these weekends, right? And a lot since I've worked, I said every weekend I will have time to chill out. I've been even more busy. <laughs> I mean, next weekend I'm hoping I can just chill out, but I guarantee something will come up and I'll be busy for the rest of the weekend. And then on Sunday, this is my relaxing time. It's recording this. <sighs> yeah. And depending on who's watching, this isn't particularly... Uh particularly relaxing either well yeah. anyway we're talking about the long good friday tonight it's a film yeah. that just kind of a bit of divine inspiration really from me i just kind of sat there and i was thinking right what what should we do this week and i don't know just came up just sort of popped up i thought you know what long good friday i've heard so much about it and the ratings are absolutely phenomenal yeah. so why not watch it? I've never seen it before. Uh, you know, um, when he said that, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, yeah it's a bit odd, really. Yeah, it slipped me by, you know, because I quite like Bob Hoskins. It's got a strong South East London connection as well. My family all from the East End of London. So I kind of grew up hearing that Cockney accent and meeting a few odd characters and stuff, you know. My own family has got a few odd characters and stuff that I can relate to in this movie, and yeah, so it's a bit odd that it slipped me by this one. Yeah, I'm quite, I'm very very surprised. I've seen it two or three times. Uh, one of my uh, favourite uh, British productions, really, I have to say. Uh, and Helen Mirren, bloody hell, she what? is a wolf. She's hot in this movie, isn't she? Oh, really? You think? I, I don't know with Helen Mirren. She's one of those ones that catch me on a on a good day. I might go, yeah, she's all right, but. There's something about it, I'll give it that, but no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I don't necessarily agree with you on that. It, it's you're basically to... saying you wouldn't give her one uh, in yeah. the, if you were around that time. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd say. 
Sorry, we've got technical problems at the moment on the other side, but I'm sure Paul will join us again. Um, ah, he's back. Oh, shit. No. I just cracked a fucking joke then and all. And I was, oh, no. Wasted. Yeah, you have I'm to sure. say that again. What is the joke? I, I can't even fucking remember it now. It was a spur of the moment thing. It's probably Gone. one of those. Uh, bloody, I'm quite surprised. Oh, that's you right. said that. <laughs> no, that's right. I, I said, um, I said, I think I, you know, I said, no, sorry, love. I think I could do better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, although I've seen Helen Mirren five years previous to that, or movies, or ten years before that in the early seventies. Wow, she was real babe. In the uh, yeah, she was going out with Liam Neeson at the time as well. I think when this movie was made. All right. What, yeah. films you talk, what films are you referring to then? I think there's one where Excalibur, I don't know if that was before this or... Uh, um... Yeah, I think. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I think I've got it, actually. I've never seen it. Mate, it was like a, a uh, what do you call it, soft porn for main cinema, basically. What was it? I think it was called Excalibur. I yeah, I know the film you're talking about. It definitely is. Yeah, uh, 1981, so it was after this. After this. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, but I've seen a, a in a movie before this, uh, before this period. But I don't. I thought it was Excalibur, so I don't know which movie it would have been then. But I've seen her on a Parkinson interview in Salty Tea, mate, in a black dress. And oh my god, she was hot. Hmm. I know I'm going to go out and talk about her, but I don't know if you know she comes from a white Russian family. I'm not saying she's white, okay? Before anyone gets me wrong. Um. Okay, so Mirren doesn't yeah. sound, sound particularly Russian to me. But, I think yeah. it's Anglified or she's they changed her name, but she, mm. as you know, they were uh, the opposite to the vocal of the revolutionary Lenin and Co. Mm. Uh, well, I remember her in Caligula. Have you ever seen that? bits of it I think uh, when I had it on TV I was a little bit too young to watch it because there was quite a bit of uh, orgies in that it was basically real sex or something or some controversy of that movie there's a lot of there's a lot of controversy around that film and there's a lot of strangeness around that film it's bizarre I think it had about three different directors as well because they all just quit so there was one of them might wanted to make a poor movie the other one wanted to make a serious kind of historical drama and another one that was just glad of the glad of the job and just stitched all the pieces together. But if um, if you watch Caligula, the uncut version, I've got a copy of that. Um, it's basically yeah, there's there's scenes in it where there's like full cum shots. And you're like, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, I think it was one of the first main or the only main uh, Hollywood production where they actually have sexual intercourse. Actually, have it. Uh, you normally get that only in uh, adult movies or porn movies or whatever you want to say, but apparently that was one of the reasons why one of the directors actually quit because he said, "No, nah, I'm not going to do this for main the main uh, screening of in Hollywood. Basically, if we're mm. going to make a triple X movie, yeah, yeah, it's a bizarre film. So, um, let's share the old um, IMDb stuff." Let's go through some of the cast because there were so many um, familiar faces in this film. And as I was watching, I was like, wow, I remember him. Yeah. <laughs> I remember but him. Most of them were quite big stars in the 80s, 70s and 80s uh, in this movie. Well, in this country, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, if you grew up in this country around right about sort of the 80s and 90s, a lot of these faces you'd recognize. Yeah. So, um, an up-and-coming gangster is tested by the insurgents of an unknown, very powerful threat. I wouldn't have said he was up-and-coming. I thought he was established. I think he was an established gangster, but he was going legit. So he was up-and-coming, legit businessman, but not a gangster. Right. I yeah. think that's why the description is very wrong there. I agree with you there. He was already uh, the top dog in town. Yeah. So Bob Hoskins is the lead role, and Helen Mirren was yeah. mentioned. Paul Freeman, he played Belloc, didn't he? And Belloc in um, Indiana uh, Jones. Yeah, Indiana Jones that we had reviewed recently. Yeah. It was interesting to see him. Um, Kevin McNally. 
quite a famous. Plenty, there were, yeah, I mean, Pierce Brosnan is obviously a standout. Yep, I think this, out but... of uh, that list, there's only three of them who've made it to Hollywood: uh, Hoskins, uh, Mirren, and Brosnan. Mm. Huh. Yeah, the rest of them have kind of sort of stayed localized, sort of yeah. um, TV show movies. Although PH Moriarty, he played um, he played the lead guy. In uh, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels, I say the lead guy, the lead, the, the sort of the underground, the boss. Um, I don't know if you if you remember that film or have seen Lock, yes. Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. Yes, but um, yeah, he was the guy that was kind of um, running, running the the, uh, the underground, the you know what I'm saying, the organised crime. Yeah, that underworld. Was, yeah, that, that, that fucked them out of the out of the money they had to spend the rest of the movie trying to find. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, I thought I recognised him from somewhere because uh, he was always a mean bastard. But that actor, and he looked it, didn't he? Uh, really, with his scars and everything. Yeah, yeah. But, uh... Well, I have to say straight off the bat, right? I was actually looking forward to watching this because I've never seen it before. Such okay. good ratings. I mean, the I'm going to share the Rotten Tomatoes score as well in here. The, the ratings of this are just absolutely phenomenal. So I was really excited about watching this, thinking, Christ, you know, what this is going to be uh, mind blowing. This is going to rock my world, this movie. I'm just not going to be able to stop thinking about this film. Um, don't, don't tell me it disappointed you. It did. Yeah. Yep. It did. <laughs> I, the first hour and 10 minutes, Bob Hoskins as the. As the you know, Harold, the, the the criminal boss, yeah. was a bit, almost like a comedy character at some points. It was almost laughable what he was saying <laughs> and doing. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I was like, hold on a second. I, maybe it's because we've just kind of, <clears throat> you know, in the nineties, you watch films like Goodfellas and Casino and all that kind of stuff, like right? these proper nasty art bastards. Yeah, and then you watch this, and he's like having a joke, and he's kind of the way that he's talking to his crew, and that it's it doesn't inspire strength and sort of dominance that you would expect from a character like that. I think it was well acted. I think Bob Hoskins did a good job, and it's well acted. But I was just a little bit kind of like, wow. Yeah, it's... I know what, what you're saying. He sounds like a fool, really. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, some guy who's just been given that position and he's just right, okay, I need to do this, do that, but he didn't, he wasn't making sense. It's like panicking every time. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. It just didn't really show sort of strength of character. No, uh, until also, go on, go on. I also felt the storyline as well uh, was sort of a little bit ripped off from. <laughs> um, Okay, it was an American set, so you could, they'll say no, it wasn't. About a gangster becoming legit was that was done in nineteen seventy one, seventy two. I think in The Godfather, when uh, Michael Colleon uh, basically takes over from his father and goes, "I'm going to go legit," All right? And and, uh, and it's like typical gangster movie or certain gangster movies who follow that story about going trying to go legit. Yeah. Um... But then there's nothing really original anymore, is there? Particularly, nah. I mean, nah. you know, probably since maybe 1950s, 1960s movies, originality kind of stopped because most things have been thought of and done. Yeah. But then I never really got the impression that he was going legit. I never got that impression. He was just do it, working on a big deal to earn a shitload of money. It yeah. wasn't really. It wasn't. I didn't. I never got the impression that it was all to, all to go legit. I think um, was it bank manager or one of them mentioned is is good is at last it's good to see how the, all your enterprises are going legit, and I think uh, the Docklands was going he was going to build this massive project there. Uh, another thing about that uh, that part, you know, the where they show the first bit of the Docklands, mm. uh, that is Catherine Dock, the Catherine Docklands. I've been there, uh, that pub, and where they fly. There's a pavement going on the side where the actual the cameras sort of in the air or something. That's where all the shops are. 
they take a scene where it goes round. You see a uh, brown building. There's a pub there. It's meant to be a 18th century pub, but it's built only in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing at the back where you see the car always, always driving to the yacht, that's all gone. It's basically all modernised and stuff like that. And it's quite yeah. interesting how deprived that area was for a long time. People don't realise. It's talking about the... The movie was about the good times that this country was having in the eighties, or the start of it. Really, there is a very there, there is a very good um, BBC sort of documentary um, with Bob Hoskins, nineteen eighty two. Bob Hoskins, London is being sterilised by greed. You can look that up on YouTube, and it's basically um, Bob Hoskins walking around with. Um, I can't remember that guy's name now, but quite a sort of notable BBC journalist at the time. And he walks around the whole of London and sort of says, you know, there used to be families living here and now it's all just being demolished and being made into office blocks and all that kind of stuff, you know. Yeah. And complete gentrification of the East End. And... That, that, well, that's what happened to the Docklands, but there was nothing mm. there anymore. I mean, they were rotting away. People don't realise the last decade of glory was probably early to mid sixties in the Docklands, maybe up to late seven sixties, uh, and that and after that, really there was nothing left there. So they were trying to revive that, and that what he was trying to do with that plan, malls and offices and shopping centres and all that stuff, and which has actually happened, and I think it was happening at the time. So they actually ripped it off that bit from what was actually happening in that part of London at the time. Hmm. Well, I don't know if it's a good or bad thing. I've got no idea. Because all it is now is just fucking pret a manger Costa Coffees and H&M's. It's all yeah, that's fucking true. insane. It's just a malaise of... It's just a constant sort of blur of beige everywhere now across the UK. Every major town and city you go to, it all looks the fucking same. Same yeah. old shops, same old shit. Mm. Exactly. There's very few places left now, isn't there, with character? But anyway, coming back to the movie, <laughs> before we get yeah. carried away about that, like <laughs> like last week, got away, uh, carried away with history, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, well, it's kind of in context with the film, I suppose. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't dislike this film, but I do feel sort of slightly disappointed. I was expecting something more. I think where it turned for me was the hour and 10 minute mark where he done that the done that fellow with a whiskey bowl oh okay yeah that that was um did you recognize that guy from uh, any tv program yeah i can't think what it was is it was it um casualty i think it was a yeah. long running yeah, long running right, yeah. tv show over over here in the uk um i don't even know it's still on is it I've got no idea. I think it might be. No. Um, I, I stopped watching it probably in the early to mid nineties, probably. Yeah. Casually, yeah. Just about that was about um, an NHS um, accident and emergency A and E unit, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> My absolute fucking shit show they've begun these days. It'd be interesting to go back and watch the early episodes of that, see actually it, how it actually functioned then, as opposed to now. <laughs> yeah. where, where it's just a fucking lottery if you get seen or not in the same day because they've been waiting for 48 hours to get seen in A&E in this country these days the world has changed since then the world has changed mm. I don't know what to say yeah um, so some of the I mean the acting in this is pretty good I quite like watching um, Denzel from Only Fools and Horses another TV oh, yeah. English yeah. TV TV show. When I see him, it's like, hey, it's Denzel. Yeah. Now. You can't take him seriously, can you, when you uh, see no, him? No, unfortunately not. No, he's typecast. Yeah. Yeah. yeah poor bastard. I have to say, uh, the young lady who was under him, uh, it's not bad. She was okay. Bit of a uh, full <laughs> frontal. <laughs> but yeah, I wouldn't like someone smashing in my door if I'm uh, halfway uh, having a bit of a nice time, mate. Um, well, yeah. Um, yeah, I kind of, I kind of winced a little bit when they they got that machete and they're kind of slicing across his back of his legs and stuff. That was like, oh shit. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think it, it wouldn't be allowed these days. You know, they, they might say, you know, 
Right across his ass cheeks. I mean, he won't be yeah. able to sit down for a, for a long time. So, yeah, it kind of I kind of squirmed in my chair when watching it. It's like shit. That's got to fucking hurt. Um. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't the greatest uh, scene ever. I've seen without go- you know, he just felt oof, bloody hell. Yeah, shit. Mm. Fuck, yeah. I, I was reading Guardian article actually. Guardian. Yeah, it's like the one and only time I'll ever read that trash shit. But um, there was an article about this specifically. How they apparently they edited out. A beheading scene from this movie. My, oh, okay. Well, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. It's a bit of an eye opener, really. But um, yeah, let me see if I can find it. I'll um, I'll read it, read it out. <laughs> what what made is... me laugh? Uh, it, it, it is sort of thing. Something you would probably say to someone when Bob Hoskins, basically, you know, the blonde who's sleeping with Denzel, basically um, goes uh, the, near the bed and he goes, anyway, have this other prick and throws the need well. <laughs> There's oh, something yeah. you would probably say. To someone. I can imagine you just going and being a gangster. Yeah, have this other prick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that place they, they went into, um, yeah. yeah, it was a heroin den, wasn't it, basically? Yeah. It was a heroin dealer, yeah. Um, <laughs> but so he picked up a syringe and said, "Here, yeah, yeah. yeah, why you're here? Give yeah, yeah. yourself another prick." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, this article itself. I mean, I might put a link in the description for people that are interested. But um, okay. it's. Uh, goes into detail about various different scenes and sort of the, the violence yeah. behind it. Um, Interesting. I'm trying to find, where is this beheading scene? Uh, I had to be did the scene pulled out of bed. The costume lady had to pour coffee into me before I went on set. <laughs> when I was like pissed up the night before, apparently been out on the drink. Um, yeah. So uh, they were interrogating me. PH Moriarty, you played razors at a machete. They called him the human spirograph because he had so many scars. I played it fearful because I was. I was genuinely <laughs> nearly crying when they did that take. Bob looked at me as if to say, you have melted me up, mate. He was great, so generous, so patient. Years later, we were invited to a polo match in Windsor. Oh, that's a step up, isn't it? It was just after I had done the full Monty. Bob was there as well. And at half time, when all the horses and players go off the pitch, we had to go on and press the divots. I said to Bob, what are we supposed to be doing? And he was like, I don't fucking know. Why are we here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I mean, Bob Hoskins is a guy that I would love to have met, actually. Yeah. But how can I say? You can take the boy out of the East End, but you can never take the East End out of the boy. Well, I think Bob Hoskins was, wasn't he South London? I thought he was South I, I'm London. I'm not sure. I'm just saying it's just saying all South London, whatever he may be. Yeah, you can't take that out. No, no, yeah. definitely not. Um, there's a good quote here, actually. It's at like the end of the film, actually. Um, telling New York Mafia what he thinks of them. Shut up, you long streak of paralysed piss. What I'm looking for is someone who contributed what England has given to the world. Culture, sophistication, genius. A little bit more than hot dog, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, but... Uh, well, good moments in this movie. Yeah, after there was, there was, yeah. I mean, Bob Hoskins carried this film, carried this film massively, um, and it is just sort of typical of of a character like him, just kind yeah. of hogs the camera, and and really carries it. Yeah, but you wouldn't believe it's the same actor who was in Who Framed Roger Roger Rabbit, would you? Um, well, he he kind of. He did kind of um, carry that as well to some yeah, degree. Yeah, he did. Yeah, that film. He was very good in that. I thought it was um, Jessica Rabbit who carried that really with her big boobs. But um, isn't it weird, right? That, that cartoon <laughs> character, and you just get like a raging horn for fucking cartoon character. Yeah, it was. That is a that is perfect. I mean, you can go online and you can find a bunch of redhead women dressed up as Jessica Rabbit because it's kind of like a fetish, but, and there's something about that shape. Of that cartoon character, the big hips, the big tits, the, the, the long red hair, and Kathleen um, Turner's voice as well. I mean, it's just it's perfection, isn't it? 
<laughs> I remember yeah. I was a kid thinking, fuck, you know, I would. But it's a cartoon character, you idiot. What are you talking about? Mate, you need to get uh, uh, the cartoon book, mate. Maybe uh, through it, but I mean, that's beside the point. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know what you're saying, but she was probably in that year. I know we're going off topic here, but she was probably the sexiest lady character at that time in the movie. A cartoon character. A cartoon character. It, it sort of doesn't really count, does it? But, no. Yeah. Wasn't she based on strange. Kim Bessinger? Slightly. Kim Bessinger's not built like that. No, she isn't. No. Or was it L- Lana Turner? It's one of the uh, famous old movie stars or more than movie. I think it's Lana Turner. Well, wasn't it based in the sort of the 1920s, 1930s, Roger Rabbit? Yeah. yeah. So I think yeah. it must have been Lana Turner, who was very famous at a blonde bombshell from the 30, from 30s, 40s and 50s, I think. Hmm. I think. So anyway. what, do, what do you, yeah, what do you think of this movie then overall? Cause... What, what? I'll tell you what made me laugh is that I'm going back to that scene, Denzel's scene, right? When when they kick him out, you could tell the woman was an actress because she was cracking up. <laughs> Did you notice that? She was cracking up and laughing. She had like. a smile on her face, yeah. When they lifted yeah. him up off the bed and sort of threw him into the arms of the other geese and take him yeah. downstairs, yeah, she had a big smile on her face, yeah. I don't know. I noticed she... that. Yeah, so I don't know if it was like going, shit, guys, you look at me, you've seen my tits or boobs or whatever, or it was just like a comedy moment where he's throwing him off. Well, I think it's, can... I think it was just a case that they didn't, you know, they didn't cut that scene. They did a few, a few takes and they said, oh, fuck it, let's just get on with it. Yeah. And also, you know, expectations are a little bit different then for moviegoers, I suppose. Yeah. Whereas now we're sort of more critical about things because we can watch stuff on demand. We yeah. can watch that scene over and over and over again if you wanted to. Whereas back in the day, in the 80s, when 1980, when this was released, you'd go and buy a cinema ticket, you'd watch it once, and, that's and it. Um, you have to pay for it again. So. Yeah. But it cracked me up because you could tell she was laughing, going, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and EastEnders, Kathy from EastEnders. Yeah, Kathy Bill. Yeah. yeah, she was there. Yeah. She was getting, didn't she kind of lose her job because she was sucking some guy off in a in a in a lane yeah. by on a motorway or something? Got caught yeah, on her, boy, uh, her boyfriend. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, and then she got it back after five years. She's back in it. Yeah, she is back in it. I don't watch it, but one thing I have to say, she's got a nice backside in that movie with that joke. Oh, yeah, when she was a young lady. Yeah, 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 when she was younger, I definitely would have. Yeah, yeah. Her, her and Helen Mirren. <laughs> this has just turned out to be a, an episode of Who Would Be Shag? <laughs> Is it funny? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I think um, Piers Brosnan, I think, uh, you know that scene with Colin in the room? I wouldn't pool? shag him. No, but not only <laughs> that, but you know the, uh, the pub? Ah, that's one thing I noticed in the pub. It was brilliant. The soul cigarettes. Did you notice that? No, I didn't. What? Which which pub we talked about? Which one? The so one that was blown the... up? No, no, not that one. The first one where Colin goes into it and he picks up that bloke and then they get kidnapped and he goes, hey, you guys go out, I'm just getting something. And he actually brought a pack of cigarettes, Benson and Hedges. I'm sure it was because it was a gold pack, so it must bring ben- Benson and Hedges. And one thing I noticed, everyone was smoking in this movie as well. Every second, everyone just took a cigarette out and was smoking. Yep. Thing to do, um, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, get up in the morning. Don't worry about the coffee. Let's cigarette. go have a cigarette. Yeah. Yeah. Don't even brush your teeth. Just cigarette straight away. Yeah. Um, roll, on, roll onto your side. Cigarette. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. On the toilet. Cigarette. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was <laughs> just amazing. It was just amazing. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that's a scene where he was touching that bloke up in the pub. Colin was. I felt a bit uneasy uh, about the, the way he was touching his leg. Sorry, we're having, uh, again, some technical issues here. On my back. Uh, yeah, you're back. You're back. Oh, okay. uh, I was, yeah, you know that scene um, yeah. where he was touching that guy's leg sort of yeah. thing and putting his sort of uh, hand closer to the crutch sort of thing in the pub? I, I felt 
Oh, uh, like, okay, mate. Yeah, yeah, I think we've got the point in the movie. What's going on there? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah. yeah. Good luck to the right. guy if he wants to, you know, do whatever right. with the guy. But yeah, on you know, just having that on screen. Well, woo. yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, I can't do that. That whole sort of I can't watch the sort of the gay stuff on TV shows and, and movies because you can't do it. I have to look away. It just I makes think, me cringe. I just. But it, what I have to admit, it was a risque uh, situation. It was a very risky situation in the eighties. It's not like now where everything's open in the. In Wearing's the gay, isn't it? Now there's yeah, no, there's no yeah. point in having a movie or a TV show if you're not gay anymore, is it? So you know, you understand how different it is from today. In the eighties, mm. it was still taboo. Even in the nineties, yeah. it was. Uh, so, you know, that actor's a great actor because he played the French. Was it French? Uh, guy he played in Indiana Jones, or was he? I think he was. Uh, no, I think he was French. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the first time I heard him. In, uh, remember he- hearing him in an English accent, and he did a uh, a South London accent. Well, he's English, isn't he? He's an yeah, English yeah, he's English. But I never, never had seen him or heard him actually speaking an English accent. He was always in that French. Excellent, mm. because that was the first movie I'd seen him in Indiana Jones. It's like yeah. Peter Sellers. To me, he was always French till I knew he was English at a certain age, because I'd always heard him in a French accent. Although it was awful, but I heard him in a French accent. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I know what you mean. The, yeah. That scene is a bit yeah. difficult to watch. Yeah. yeah. I felt the same about the swimming pool scene as well, actually. Yeah, Pierce Brosnan was just kind of like luring him in. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Still, it wasn't as bad as that first scene. Well, no. Argu- actually, arguably worse. They were both kind of half naked. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I mean, again, very risky for the time. Uh, and I'll take my hat off for that to both of the actors. Because if I was an actor in the 80s, I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> no, uh, it's just it would have been too too risky. Uh, I mean, if you think about the e- attitudes of uh, people then, now nah, I wouldn't. Uh, sorry, but yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. It's not like now. Yeah, but but don't ask me would I do it now? But, I'm, yeah, that's the same. I wouldn't even do it now. If I, no, I wouldn't like, do it now. I wouldn't do if it I was now. I'm a Hollywood like... actor, and they asked me to just get off with some bloke. So sorry, yeah, the, you know this this part is for a gay man. I said I'm out. Sorry, yeah. I can't do it. I know it's only acting, but so I can't do it. There's no way I'm. I can't do that. Even no for way. fifty million dollars. No, I'd, I'd still. Like... I'd find other work. I'd find yeah. other work. I'd say now that I'll go and do the B movie that's you know, maybe yeah. boy down the road's doing on a fifty thousand dollar budget. I'd rather do that than I would. Yeah. Pretend to be play a gay man in a in a Hollywood film. I just nah. Yeah, you know, that was Will Smith's big uh, first break uh, through war, being a, a gay man. No. <laughs> After Fresh Prince of Bel Air, yeah, I've been serious. Um, I'm not joking. Now. On what film? I don't. I don't know. All I remember watching a scene. I never remember the name, but he's in a a phone uh, box, basically talking in a very camp way. And it was <laughs> seriously. He was gay in that movie. It wasn't even. He wasn't even joking. And that was his first big break in uh, the big on the big screen from Fresh Prince. Okay. If he does it, you can do it, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing it. Okay, okay fine. Same here. It. I wouldn't do it either, mate. I'm not doing it. That, that's the end of our Hollywood career, mate. <laughs> yeah. Ended before it even fucking began. <laughs> yeah. Can you play a gay bloke? No. Right. Like, that's it. Never. You know, you're done. Especially yeah. in today's day and age when everyone's gay and everyone's <laughs> got to be gay. That's it. Yeah. You're finished. You can't be an actor. Oh, well. Mate. Never mind, I'll mate. Stick to, stick to podcasting instead. It's fucking easier. Next time, mate, maybe in the <laughs> next life. But anyway, coming back to uh, the actual acting and the actual story, it's quite amazing when he said, uh, one of them said, you can't beat these guys, they're too big for you. Even the British Army can't. I think it was a, a bloke who was in Casualty says that to him. Was his name Charlie in that as well? Was Charlie, uh, yeah, it? I think it was actually, yeah. yeah his, name was Char- Charlie was in, his name was Charlie in Casualty as well. Yeah, so... Amazing. Uh, Amazing. <laughs> uh, your name was. I tell you what, we'll call you Charlie because you were called Charlie in that movie. Because everyone knows you as fucking Charlie from the Good Night, yeah, the Long Good Friday. So there you go, Charlie. Yeah, exactly. 
so when Charlie told him that and he stabs him, he had a point because these guys were more dangerous than probably East End gangsters. Well, yeah, I mean, that councillor, was it or some sort of MP that they were involved with? A uh, councillor, mate, councillor. It was a councillor, it's probably a Tory councillor. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, but when they went to that bang, oh, banger racing, that's a thing, yeah, banger yeah, racing, yeah. right? I remember as a kid going to one of those, my uncle, I think it's, yeah, it's my uncle, my uncle Paul, a bit of a black sheep of the family, right? He was part of a banger racing team, I think he managed it. To try and get like the young kids out of dealing fucking heroin or whatever it was or wherever it was, and um, instead give them a bit of a focus, right? So, mate, stop saying that because you're dressed like a gangster now. You're saying all these things, it's a little <laughs> bit worrying what you might be doing. <laughs> he isn't like that, okay, guys? Yeah, but anyway, carry on, so, mate. I remember going to this banger race as a kid and standing up on this kind of like, um, it was like a, a mound, a mound of earth, like a bank. Oh, yes. Yeah, right? yeah. Stood over there. I remember my dad being there and my mum was there as well. We were watching this banger racing going on. And to see that in this film just brought back so many memories of then. And I must have been a very young kid then. But It was a, it was a very popular sport. People don't really know how big it was for once upon a time in Britain, banger, banger racing. I think it still goes on, but it's just not... You know, it's just not sort of popular thing. It's not something that's advertised. It's not te- certainly not televised. But yeah, you just take the old the beaten up old Ford Escort down. The, yep. Strip it of all. Strip it of any weighty parts, and then just drive around in an oval track, smashing shit out of everything. It was great. It was absolutely great fun. Was that also in White City? Because one of the Greyhounds were there. Don't know. Okay. Okay. No. Yes. But but anyway, the, the, so the, that banger racing scene, you've got that counsellor. Yeah. And he said, you can't, money doesn't mean anything to these people. They're fanatics. Yeah. They're political. Yeah. And he's absolutely right. It was a cause. It was, well, it's the IRA, wasn't it? They, yeah, exactly. Money didn't mean shit. They, they had a purpose. They had a cause. Yeah. And they didn't give a toss about that. But that was pretty good, that, the 60 grand and, you know, Bobby uh, should have, uh, um, Hell should have just given that money and said, Look, yeah, we haven't done anything. There's your money. Go away. He just was so pissed off. He, he couldn't see beyond uh, him being the king ping of London. But nah, shouldn't have muck around with these guys. These guys were serious, serious people. I'm not sure I would have done anything different if I was him, if I was um, Harold. I think I would have done anything different. I think I would have gone in there with guns blazing and just just shot up the place. And killed the councillor as well. I've done a fucking lot of them, yeah. No. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's why, I don't know if you know, but they've become very strict with uh, those councillors now. You can't, that, in those days, that was a problem. Uh, in the seven, Especially in the 60s and 70s, they had a really bad reputation and you always heard rumours about it. Like even in Get Carter, if you remember that a uh, guy was a councillor in Newcastle, was getting the that restaurant built. In, oh, uh, yes. Park Park. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, they, they used to have a really bad reputation. Nowadays, anything beyond, uh, any hospitality beyond 50 quid and you have to declare it. Right, okay. Uh, so back then it was a bit of a licence to print money. Yes, I think quite a few of them were cool. Uh, I, I can't say officially or in a sense of yeah i know but yes there were quite a lot of rumors yeah mm. went around yeah rock and roller have you seen that movie yes i have yeah there's another counselor in there as well but uh, apparently yeah yeah and uh, apparently it happens hmm. uh, again in that yeah <laughs> so, uh, it's always london though that's the funny thing that means well, london's but... really corrupt yeah, yes, definitely. But also because London is an international city. So if you're, yeah. if you're making a film for an international audience, then obviously you're going to pick London, yeah, because people have seen and heard of it. Yeah, you're not going to pick well, Miami, are we? Well, more so these days. I mean, if you think Get Cart, you mentioned that. That was up in Newcastle, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah. When yeah. it gave a shit about Newcastle back then. Gave a Longer. fuck. Which is why that film, well, I say why actually but no, that was quite an internationally popular film but i really liked that film when we watched it for the channel because yeah. it was something different it wasn't fucking london no you know everything's london london 
everything's just been boiled down for the, the you know the dumb masses that now London. you think of England. Oh yes, yeah, where London is, isn't it? Oh, yeah, as well as other fucking cities. Yeah. Yeah, I remember going to the Far East and I'll say from Britain or England. Oh, you live in London. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, no. everyone's from London. No, no, London's a fucking, a fucking shite hole, mate. It's all full of Russian oligarchs and Saudis buying up property and everyone else gets fucked. No, London's a shit hole. No, I don't live in London. No. <laughs> Can't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can. Uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, the funny thing was, uh, it was not only that, but the language police officer when they meet after finding a bomb that was quite racial i mean at the time it was allowed to be used but nowadays can you imagine yeah. saying what he said <laughs> it, was, it cracked me up at the same time i think whoa that is that is quite uh uh interesting because there's no way anyone would get away with it now but it's the same thing when they were cruising down that street and they asked that guy where oh the yeah former lived and um he said this used to be a nice street, families yeah. and houses were kept nice and families and whatnot. And there was just, you know, black yeah. fellow and black kids in the background. You know exactly yeah. what he was implying. Yeah. And the thing is, with all that sort of stuff, is I don't I don't think we're actually any better in two thousand twenty three with racism. I think there's more d- divide now than there ever was back then. Yeah. Back then, people found a common ground and got on with it. Whereas yeah. now, it just seems everyone wants to play, wants to play the victim, wants to yeah. play the race card and be a victim. I don't think we're any further ahead. All this no. progressive bullshit that's been going on in fucking woke movies and TV shows has done nothing but just divide us even more. I think we were the last ones in the early, well, in the nineties and probably early to mid two thousands, where it wasn't a big deal where you came from, what you were. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think you're right. Yeah, I mean, we knew that there were differences with people and cultures and stuff, but you just got on with it. Exactly. Whereas now it's like, oh well, I've got I've got a bloody whatever heritage and stuff, and I identify as this. It's like oh, fuck off. Yeah. Can't I just say I don't care? I'm human. And I just want to get on with my work. Yeah. And that's yeah. it. Well, football team you support. Oh, so do I. Yeah, brilliant. Right, let's let's get together and you know let's support the same football team and just find a common ground. Isn't it? There's none of that shit anymore. It, doesn't, to, it just doesn't or, seem. Or go to rugby and start drinking at 10 o'clock on the train <laughs> till you get to Bath, like we did. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yeah. A gentleman do... sport. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have to do that again one day. Well, uh, you need anyway... to come down here. You need to come down here and take the Pirates game. That's an experience. Yeah, sure. Sure. I'm looking forward to coming down there soon. Um, yeah. I can probably record one of these live. Um, that is, hmm. if our if our third uh, presenter ever turns up, he's always on bloody holiday. That guy, bloody hell, he's made too much money. Um, I'm, I'm, should we take a brief break? What yes, is it? Let's just yep. recover ourselves here. Yeah. All right, we'll be back in a second after these. This important message. Have you got more money than sense? Then why not give it to eleven t eight Patreon dot com? Link is in the description too. Give the video a like and a subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. And I know that there's some of you out there that enjoy this content. There must be just law of averages. There's got to be at least one person that actually likes this video. Now let's get on, shall we? Let's stop jabbering and get on. E-begging over. I'm out. See you later. Anyway, <laughs> we're back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After that little panic cleanser. Um, I don't know sure I've got anything else more to say about this film because I was actually disappointed. All it reminded me was of the 80s, really big time. When the French chef, the dishes and stuff like that, <laughs> the big dishes and thick. So that was French. The restaurant was very 80s, uh, the way it was decorated and stuff like that. But all the, at the same time, it also reminded me that was the last decade of uh, proper old-fashioned glamour as well. Because in the nineties, mm. when we got old, it was like jeans and yeah. and ripped grunge. jeans and all that. So yeah, Remember grunge, that? yeah, grunge, yeah, where everyone just dressed like they were a heroin addict, with yep. baggy jeans and baggy t-shirts that were like three sizes too big. Yeah, most of them still have uh, do that. 
the youth, <laughs> say, but not Grinch. They don't wear wide. Uh, but yeah, half of their trousers is down, and you know. Yeah, so but now, now, now time jeans is all spray on stuff, isn't it? Spray on yeah. denim. It's so fucking oh, tight yeah. that you can see the balls, and yeah, the camera <laughs> toe in them as well. Yeah, yeah good old days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, should we um, should we score it? Yeah, sure. As it's your pick, I'm going to let you go first. Okay, seven out of ten. Mate, you beat There's... me to the score. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there was elements of this film that I liked, which is why I gave it a seven because I did find it interesting and entertaining. I found it interesting from a <laughs> sense that this is 1979 that this film was recorded. Okay. So 1979, and to see what London looked like, and the sort of the general attitude of the day with the way that they were talking, the, the acting, but, and also Bob Hoskins, who I'm um, sort of become a bit of a new fan of really. I quite like his film. And so for me, it was a seven. I, I, I would watch it again and I'd see if I could take anything else away from it on the second watch. Okay. Hey, interesting. I have to say very interesting what you've just said. One thing I did notice in this movie, I didn't realise Helen Mirren had a little tattoo on her little here on her wrist. I noticed that when she was talking to that chef. Hmm. Always forgot she had that, because I've seen it before. But anyway, yeah, nothing interesting really to say, but that was one thing I noticed in the movie. And she speaks French, and I think she speaks French in real life um, as well. Um, yeah, the fashion was very uh, early 80s. Uh, and like yourself, I'm going to give it a seven. Uh, in the past, I would have probably given it eight or nine. I think it was just a case where, yeah, like you, what I remembered and what I saw yesterday was completely different uh, in that sense. I thought, it was, oh, it was out there. It was amazing, uh, mm. etc. Uh, and the other thing I remembered about this movie before watching yesterday was, uh, I think, Piers Brosnan's uh, breaking, breakthrough part. Just smiling and chewing a gum and throwing a gun with a silencer at the end. Well, I think it was, I don't think it was his breakthrough part, but it was like his earliest feature film, I think. Maybe, and yeah. I think, I think it, he didn't yeah. say anything, did he, really? He didn't no, do he, anything. He just looked at people and that's it. Yeah. 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 Hmm. I think, um, just to sort of elaborate a little bit on my score, um, I'm a fan of movies that on stories in general that just kind of leave you wondering. And the end of this, obviously, Ari, Arold, whatever the character's name is, Arold, yeah. he is kidnapped at the end yeah. by the Irish, the IRA. And it's just him in the back of the car. And he's like, hey, what the fuck? And then obviously he's driving and he sees his wife in that other car that passes him by. Yeah. And then there's very long focuses on his face in that. Now, I can imagine as, a, as a, an actor, well, just as a person, with a camera on your face, that kind of close, that shot, and you're yeah. told, right, you need to go through a range of emotions. Anger, surprise, a, sort of astonishment, and then eventual realisation. So you're given, the director say to him, right, you've got to do this, and the camera's yeah. on you. That's it. The camera's on you for like 10 minutes and you go for that range of emotions. That's, that has got to be difficult to do because it's yeah. almost it, it's almost difficult to watch that yes. scene because it's so focused on his face and you're like, all right, is there anything else? Are we going to change shot? Is there anything else going to happen? But he manages that that kind of like surprise and shock to then like this kind of realisation of what's yeah. going on. And then there's like an anger in his face. Yes. And then he's like, fuck it. Like, also an acceptance of his fate. I know what's going to happen here. Yeah. So, fuck. Might as well go with it. Yeah, it's kind of like this kind of, oh, fuck it. I could have done better. Bollocks. Almost angry with himself. Like, here I am in the back of this fucking car being taken by the IRA. I'm going to get executed. I know I am. But fuck it, you know, if I could have just done something else, I might not be in this situation. Now. And you could see all the cogs going in his head. Yeah. So as difficult as it was to watch that scene, it was fucking brilliant. 
Yeah, and you could tell that when he saw his wife for the last time that he knew that he wasn't only going to get executed, but she was as well. Oh, yeah. Well, they, yeah, I think they, the whole lot, the whole but, crew would have been done eventually. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can imagine, if you if there was a the Long Good Friday 2, you can yeah. imagine that his crew, it would have been about his crew just scarpering across all different parts of the country trying to escape. And then IRA just eventually just hunting them all down one by one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and at that time, it, it's very much, that was how strong they were, actually, uh, because we had a lot of Irish uh, labourers working in um, labour coming over and working here. On, and that's what they were trying to say. Basically, mm. directly, they had quite a lot of influence in London without us really knowing or the government knowing. Um, and that was one thing Hell should have listened to was the police officer who just squeezed his face and goes, yeah, you know who's paying for you. But when the guy said, don't do anything, it's beyond you. Yeah. He just said, okay, fine, I'll leave it. Should have just shut up and listened or at least worked with him. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, it wasn't the first person that warned him either. Yeah, the, uh, the guy, um, the guy that he killed with the bottle, um, his name, his character's name eludes me at the moment. Charlie. Charlie, yes. Um, it was telling him the same thing: is that you can't win against these people; they're too big. Yeah. Um, and then the counselor that said, you know, these people are fanatics. That yeah. it's an ideology that's driving them. It's yeah. not money. So he, and he ignored both. I guess it was a different level above what he was used to dealing with. He was used to dealing with petty criminals. I mean, the, the, the guys that were in the meat in the back in the meat factory, yeah. all hanging up by the meat hooks. At the end of it, you said, "Right, give them all a grand each, tell them to fuck off for their, you know, for their troubles." Yeah. It, was, it was that easy. That's what he was used to. That was a problem he was used to solving. It was about money, right? Pay them off. Job yeah. done. See you later. But this was a different, completely different level. That you couldn't handle. No, it was completely in the sense they didn't care about is it just money. It was about their so called, they wanted, well, it was about freedom of part of their country. That's what it was about. And it's very different trying to convince someone who's got that mindset and want to make it into a violent freedom fight. You can't bribe them. And that's why he didn't understand politics. And politicians found it hard as well to understand. Mm. Yeah. yeah. All right, we've well, done an hour. Should we leave yeah. it at that? We'll leave it at that. Yeah. All right, well, thanks for watching, people that have watched. There have been a lot of people dipping in and out. And that. Maybe you'll come back and watch the full thing at a later date. Remember, if you can't watch, you can always listen on Spotify as well. We upload a podcast every week there. Um, if you want to follow us on social media and stuff, then you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and other places. Um, enjoy the shorts. Enjoy the reels that I upload. Loads of stuff going on here, 78. It's just the way it is, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I should probably announce for anyone that actually cares, um, I've stopped doing the news content because no one was really watching it. And it was also, it completely changed my life. That. <laughs> that's why he looks so tired tonight. You can yeah, tell that's um, quite up with him. Yeah, for, the, for people, I mean, it, it was all right. I, I could do that every day if I didn't have a day job. If I didn't have a nine to five thirty, I could do that. But you know, I did it for a month, and some people watched it, some people didn't. Um, but I've decided that no, I'm, I'm I'm thinking about new things that I can do that aren't going to take up so much of my time, but are still going to be worth watching. So yeah, if you are one of those people who did watch the news or listen to the news content and kind of like wondering where that went, that's why because I had to change my whole fucking life in order to do it. So there you go. <laughs> 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 and then we thought it would be some more interesting stuff and you go there you go and i was yeah. getting really excited there i was looking forward to the next announcement and you go there you go uh, I'm, I'm, you know i've got plenty of i'm thinking about but um yeah i haven't quite figured it out yet i'm still yeah. scheming some things yeah so that's it from me so i'll see you next week probably and <laughs> see you next week Good luck. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching and listening. See you later.